All right guys, so I just got done testing and going over all of, uh, all right guys, so this is, all right guys, so this is gonna be a little bit of a intro before we go into the tabletop in-depth review or in-depth talking about the experience of the Junior Disaster. Now, this knife, similar to the other two knives that I will also be reviewing in tandem, is a knife that was sent to me by a awesome subscriber from Anchorage and he just wanted me to take a handful of half, light, half face blades out, play with them in the field, and ultimately tell you guys what I think about them and subsequently him as well. So like I said, this one is going to be, or this is kind of like the first uh, initial kind of impressions after testing it, running it through its paces. Now. This one is probably the one of the three that I like the most. Now I will say two of all three, all of them were resharpened by my subscriber that sent them in. So these aren't factory edges per se, but this one was probably one of the better and it cut pretty well. Now I will say as well, this is probably one of my favorites and what I would lean to as a favorite because it is most similar to what I usually carry. As you guys probably noticed dangling into the video or the testing footage was my Bark River Knives Bravo 1 and I routinely carry the Bravo 1, the Bushcrafter, uh, as kind of like my bushcrafting slash field knives that I usually go out into the wilderness with. So the Junior Disaster, the smaller version of the Disaster, is most closely like the Bravo 1 and the Bushcrafter in size size, thickness, and even materials. Now this one is also made in CPM 3V, which is probably one of my favorite steels for wilderness use, even though CPM S35VN is very highly regarded, at least by me, um, but CPM 3V is very strong. It can take an absolute pounding. I didn't necessarily even run this to its fullest extent out here in the field, just because CPM 3V is one of those steels that just keeps going. But I did run it through its paces and I honestly really liked it. It's comfortable enough for me. I will say in the long run, I probably would not be as big a fan of these finger grooves. I'm not sure how well it comes out on camera, but you can see that there are little bumps or grooves there for your fingers. And for me, if I wasn't using this with gloves or mitts, I would probably run into hot spots on those. Once again, looking back at the blades that I do love, things like the Bravo 1, they do not have any finger grooves, and there is a reason for that, because each one of these peaks is a potential hot spot. So, once again, I will get into more of this in the actual in-depth field, or sorry, tabletop kind of overview of these blades. But as far as it goes, I really did enjoy the uh, Junior Disaster. It's like I said, probably the my favorite half face blades knife that I've encountered so far. Really do like it. It was a pretty good performer. Uh, the thickness, I will say, I thought was going to be a little bit more of an issue because it's not quite as thick as some of my Bark River knives um, or other field blades that I routinely use, but it did just fine. So yeah, okay, let's jump in to the next knife. All right, guys, today we're gonna talk about the Half Face Blades Disaster Junior. And this blade is very interesting. This is probably, honestly, one of my favorite um, Half Face Blades of them all. Now, that being said, I'm personally not a very huge fan of Half Face Blades, and I'll kind of like put this out as like a message or like a, uh, yeah, like my perspective of half face blades. And that is that if you own one or if you really want one, go ahead and buy these knives. These knives aren't necessarily bad blades on their face, but in, in like they're well constructed, they use good materials, but I think the half face blades charges a premium for what they are. And there's several factors, especially in their sheath, that I think they lack a lot of refinement with. Also these blade coatings tend to look pretty like chintzy, I'm not gonna lie. So there's just a lot of like little quality things that I dislike about this company. However, if you really do like these knives and you really do want one, probably something like this Junior Disaster is gonna be the best bet. And this is honestly probably the closest contender to knives that I have of this blade in size, thickness, shape, design and purpose. Now, of course, the Junior Disaster comes at this with a little bit more of a tactical approach. And I will say, I do actually like the handle contouring. I like this kind of uh, cutting, 
cut out to the G10. It really does give you a lot of traction and comfort. I will also say too, this is probably one of their most squared away with when it comes to jimping because you do have this ramp here you can lock into if you need to stab or pry with this thing, but you can also easily bypass it and have your thumb up on the spine normally. Now, like many, and as I usually complain about most half-face blades, I feel like the thickness of this blade is just a little thin. They tend to go with around an eighth of an inch thick stock, whereas my preference is definitely leaning more towards 5 30 seconds, um, if not a little bit thicker, sometimes up to quarter inch, depending on what types of tasks you want to take on. But 5 30 seconds is a pretty darn competent and capable thickness that still allows you to have a very, very fine edge. Now, both of these blades are made out of CPM 3V, and I do really love 3V. It's one of my favorite steels for sure, especially for wilderness tasks, because CPM 3V just seems to be one of those blade steels that you can absolutely pound on and try to destroy, but it just doesn't get destroyed. So for that, I give them a big kudos because I do really love CPM 3V, and it's awesome to see in especially field knives like this, because oftentimes the notion is to go for something a little bit more more stainless, so things like CPM S35VN, S45VN, um, or things that tend to be a little bit more brittle and tend to not be as tough. Now, outside of that, things that I'm not the largest fan of are, first off, this handle. Um, I do, like I said, I love the milling, but the Junior Disaster and Disaster as a whole have these like finger grooves here, and they're a little bit hard to see because they are fairly subtle, but you can still definitely see that there are handle grooves on this um, handle, and it definitely is one of those things where it's like, if your fingers line up with them, it's great. But if your fingers don't line up with them or if you, they slip, these are just going to create hot spots. So on any knife that's really designed for prolonged field new, for prolonged field use, you will never see any type of finger grooves except for maybe like a finger choil or, you know, kind of a forward finger guard. Outside of that, you're never going to see those on any other you know, like blade that's designed for prolonged use because realistically finger grooves just add to hot spots. Like they just make more hot spots on the handle that you don't need. And so that is one of the biggest detractors that I have with this blade is its ergonomics are really not there for me. I would love to just see this without the finger grooves. So like just take all the finger grooves away and it would be a far better knife for it. Um, and that's kind of what draws me back to like the ethos of design for a lot of half face blades is it's like things like finger grooves are very tactical and they look good in pictures but once again in practice they're just not that and so that's why things like this bark river knives bushcrafter like in pictures and i'm sure even in this video this does not look like a strikingly amazing or beautiful or awesome knife right like this doesn't really strike anything into you i mean granted it might it's a pretty cool looking knife but as far as it goes, it's pretty basic. And like I have other Bark River Knives blades, such as the Aurora, and uh, I get people that call it I get people that call it the glorified steak knife all the time. And that's realistically, it looks like a glorified steak knife. And that's kind of the way I want it to be because it's very comfortable, very ergonomic. Whereas something like this, you know, it looks a lot better in pictures. It looks cooler. It's tactical. If you're going for that whole, you know, tactical appeal to it, people are going to like to see those finger grooves. They're going to like to see all this milling or heavy milling in the handle. They're going to want to see these, you know, really, um, noticeable you know thumb ramps and stuff like that and even things like this tip that are designed to be more of like a pry bar right people are going to want to see those things and it makes it look more tactical but it definitely cuts back on its actual practical usefulness in the field and so that's kind of uh, an issue with the whole ethos of half ace blades in my opinion because they they really lean a little bit too hard into tactics and realistically it's 
It's like most of the time, if you're looking for a good field blade, this blade kind of gets disqualified for that. Uh, if it sounds like I'm being too hard on this blade, it's because I'm trying to really be critical in a constructive manner. It's not that I hate the blade. Once again, you know, half-face blades, like they use quality materials. They're made in the US, which is awesome. Um, and you know, they have a good manufacturing process. And certainly this blade is one that you can run through a ringer and it's not going to break. It's not going to fail. It's just not going to perform in the ways that other already well-established field blades do. Things like this Bushcrafter have been out for well over 10 years, still works perfectly fine, still made in the same CPM 3V, and this is honestly probably going to fit most people's desires and needs far better than something like this Junior Disaster. Now, lastly, I think it's worth noting, as I've noted in all my other videos, I really cannot stand half-face blades sheath design because they really, like, I love Kydex sheaths personally, but the way that they make Kydex sheaths makes absolutely no sense to me. They always cut off the thumb ramp area, so you cannot push off on this blade. And then once again, there is no retention on this knife outside of the friction that the felt lining material has on this knife. Knife. And for me, I really dislike that felt lining material because one, like, so it's pitched once again as a tactical thing because you can remove your blade silently or quietly or put it back silently or quietly. But in reality, I've had other blades and I've actually had blades long before these ones came across the channel um, that had felt lined Kydex sheaths. And invariably, if you're actually using these blades in field, if you're getting them bloody, if you're getting them even just dust, dirt, and debris, like if you put this blade back in its sheath with any dust, dirt, debris on it, that felt will trap those things in this sheath. And most importantly, that felt gets like, let's say you put blood, you know, like you put this knife back in your sheath bloody, right? That blood is going to get trapped in the felt and help add to corrosion, especially with steels that are already corrosion prone. It's not really going to help you. And so it's one of those things that, you know, it looks into on paper in a perfect world. It sounds cool, but I really cannot stand it when they put felt linings in Kydex sheaths. And then moreover to the fact that, um, the fact that half-face blades doesn't have any retention from the Kydex sheath just eliminates the whole reason of having a Kydex sheath. Like if you don't want a sheath that has proper retention, just go ahead and get like a leather sheath, right? Just go ahead and get a leather sheath, right? Like if you want something that has no retention, just get a leather sheath, right? Like this is going to perform every bit as good as a Kydex sheath in that regard, right? The only difference is it won't fight you. And if you really want that soft nature of the felt, the leather sheath already has that. So like for all the realistic properties of this Kydex sheath, it might as well just be a leather sheath. Anyways, that rant aside, that has been my look at the Half Face Blades Junior Disaster. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.